Sontag is a member of the writers' group and has been a writer since his school days. Whoops. And for night, if he doesn't trip. <laughs> Where was I now? Now I lost my place. <laughs> And for tonight, he has written something special, specifically about Fox Hills. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it will hit home for a lot of you. <laughs> the reason I made this script up, I heard a very strange but true story about a couple that tried to buy a unit at Fox Hills many years ago. When they came to the clubhouse to speak to the people, they were all set to pay the money for the unit, and they asked him what building were they were living in, and they, did, they told him, or they told both of them, that they would be living in a new building, which would be called the Hoover Building. Yeah. Well, that never took place, but they didn't know that at the time. And when they heard what building, the husband grabbed the wife and said, let's get out of this place. I don't want to live in a building with a president that did all these bad things to America. And they walked out and that was it. I'm now going to talk about each one of the buildings slightly and give you an idea of where you're living now and whether you want to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> the Adams Building, first president to live in the White House. Adams skipped school when he was a kid, many classes. He smoked at the age of eight years old. None of his family went to his inauguration. No one. What does that tell you? <laughs> Wilson Building. President Wilson said, I not only use all of my brain I have, but all that I can borrow from everybody else. <laughs> Is that any nerve with you? <laughs> Harding Building. Before he became the 29th president, Harding, a Republican, fathered a love child with Nat Brilliant, 31 years his senior, so watch yourself in that building. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, I guess you heard of him. He was the tallest of all the presidents. He was six foot four inches. Remember the Gettysburg Address? The president spoke for three minutes. His speech contained 272 words including the observation that the world will little note, no one remember what we say there. Boy, was he wrong. <laughs> the Grant Building, Ulysses S. Grant. It is frequently said that Grant's middle name was Simpson. It was not. His middle name was Ulysses. And he admitted that the S in his name stood for nothing. Maybe he should have let another president use the S. <laughs> Hope your building stands for something. The Roosevelt Building, named after Theodore, not Franklin. Many people that came here thought it was named after Franklin, but it wasn't. But you could tell because they all speak softly and carry a big stick in that building. <laughs> <laughs> the Jackson Building, first Irish. American president married his wife before she was even divorced. <laughs> he forced the Cherokee Indians to move to reservations west of the Mississippi. Not too bad. Reagan Building, in a speech, said, Facts are stupid things. <laughs> These are all true statements. It's not too late to move. <laughs> The Monroe Building, Monroe Beer, a foreign capital named after him. He died on July 4th, 1831. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson also died on that same day six years earlier. The Truman Building. Did you know that Harry S. Truman actually also had no middle name? His parents gave him the middle initial S to please his grandparents. He also may have stolen the middle name from President Grant. <laughs> Harry never put a period after the S when he wrote because it didn't belong to him. <laughs> Madison Building grew up as the oldest of 12 children. 
He was the smallest of all the presidents, 5.4 inches, weighing only 100 pounds. And the unusual good sense at the age of 43 to fall in love with the widow, Dolly Payne Todd, about 17 years his junior, after having been jilted by two other women nine and 11 years previously. Truth, a little can do an awful lot. <laughs> Washington building. George Washington was the only president who did not live in Washington, D.C. That was the only president who was elected unanimously. His wish was to see a plague of mankind called war vanishing from the earth. Stay in that building. <laughs> the Jefferson Building. Father of six children by slave Sally Hemings. His embargo act intended to stop hostilities between Britain and France actually crippled the economy in the United States, forcing him to say, the government is best, that governs at least. <laughs> Almost there. Eisenhower building. Although he spent 35 years in the military and served during both world wars, Eisenhower never saw a single day of active combat. <coughs> These are all true also. Let's not fight in your building over there, though. <laughs> Did you know that Fox is defined as a cunning or crafty person? Hill is, a new, in, Hill is actually an informal short name for the capital. Anyway, welcome to Fox House. <laughs> <laughs>